Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners to the session of managerial economics. I am Dr. Supriya Jain working as an assistant professor in the institute of business management at GLA University Mathura. So let us begin with our next lecture. Before we move to this lecture let us look at the topics which we have covered in our previous lecture. In our previous lecture we have talked about these principles which are very important for a manager to know because these are the principles which help them to make their decisions better and to plan out their activities in the business. So, the first principle we have talked about was the opportunity cost principle where in this principle we have seen that what choices we are making in the alternative resources. Okay. So, in this principle we basically understand the cost which we have sacrificed or the opportunity which we have sacrificed with the second best alternative. For sure we have taken the best alternative, but the second best alternative which we have sacrificed is known as opportunity cost. And the reason for calculating this opportunity cost is to, is to find out whether you are in economic gain or economic loss, right. So, if your actual earning is more than the opportunity cost then you are in economic gain. That means the alternative which you have chosen at that point of time was correct. Otherwise you need to analyze your uh, you know alternatives in a better way in future so that you would be making a right choice. Second was your incremental principle and with that principle we have understood the things how we are going to understand the situations right the different situation in our business and when do we calculate the things on the basis of total cost and on the basis of incremental cost. Incremental cost is the increased cost the cost which will incur because of any change you are making into your business activity whether it is related to the product whether it is related to the production size or you are you know implementing new uh, machineries in your business or you are expanding the size of your business so whatever these uh, may be at stake or whatever the change you are making in your business because of which if your cost is increasing see when we make any change in our business it will impact revenue as well as the cost right so what we need to understand here if both are increasing then definitely revenue should increase more and if making any change if both of them are reducing then uh, cost should definitely reduce more and if it is only impacting the revenue if some of the revenues are increasing and if some of the revenues are decreasing then definitely the increase in the revenue should be more than the decrease in revenue and same applicable to the cost if both the if different costs are being affected some of the cost are reduced and some of the cost are being increased then definitely the reduction percentage of reduction in the cost should be more than the cost which are increasing right. So, analyzing all these facts if you are making any decision right or if you are making any change in our business that change will be a profitable change right and then this time perspective principle told us about how a manager need to make a balance between a short run as well as in the long run. So, whatever the decisions we are making we need to keep into account the impact of that decision in our business in a shorter period as well as in a longer period of time right. We cannot focus only one uh, time frame right we cannot keep on thinking like we will be getting benefit in the longer run no, no problem whatever we are doing in the short run that cannot be the case right. We need to understand what we are doing today and how it is going to impact our business in future. So, that account has to be taken up. The next was your discounting principle which help us to understand the time value of money, how we are going to understand the present value of our money as the rupee worth today is not going to worth tomorrow and its value is decreasing day by day that we all know right and the inflows and outflows of cash takes place at different intervals of time in business. So, this discounting principle will help you to know the present value of your money so that the financial decisions you are making you would be able to make them correctly. And lastly this equi marginal principle since we have limited resources. So, how we are going to allocate these resources uh, in our you know business activities so that the marginal productivity which we are going to get at the end from different activities should remain same and we should not be facing the problem of over and under utilization. 
So, this is what we have discussed in our previous lecture. I hope it was clear with every one of you. Now, let us begin with our today's class where we are going to understand the different aspects of demand. So, these are the learning objectives of this lecture. First, I will be introducing you to the basics of demand and it will help you to understand its relevance in economic decision making. So, what is demand and how the demand is helping you to make different decision in your business that is what you are going to understand first. Secondly, in this you will be able to analyze the different determinants of demand, the factors which affects the demand of the commodity and how it is going to impact the demand curve. Thereafter, you will be able to understand the different types of demands we are having. Then we will also understand the establishment of functional relationship between demand and its various determinant that is the demand function, what is uh, the relationship between the demand and its determinant. And lastly, you will understand the movements and shifts takes place in the demand curve, how do they take place and what are the factors which affects the movements and shifts in the demand curve. So, let us begin with the very first part where we are going to understand this word demand. See, this is the word which we usually hear, but how are we going to define it, how we are going to understand it, right? People have lot of needs and desire, right? Everybody wants to have each and everything, but will be calling it as a demand and how it will be converted into demand, that is what we are going to understand here. Demand is basically defined as a want, need or desire which is backed by willingness and ability to buy a particular commodity in a given period of time at a given price as well, right. So, for demand, for the accomplishment of a demand, it is very important for a person to have a need or a desire, right. If you want something, if you need something, then only you will be demanding it. But that need and desire is not enough for the accomplishment of demand. We should be having a willingness to pay for it as well as the ability to pay for it. Everybody of us want to have a premium car, right? So, if a, a producer of a car went out in the market to find out the demand for that car and if we ask everybody how many of you want to have this car, so everybody would say yes, I want to have this car. But we have to see thus they have that ability to pay for it or not. Right. So, ability is again very important. If you do not have the ability, you have a desire to buy it, but you do not have ability or capacity to pay for it, then it will not be converted into demand. Again, if you have a desire to pay for it, if you have a ability to pay for it, but you are not willing to pay, right. If your willingness is not there to pay, then again it will not be converted into demand. So, for demand, it is very important to have these three attributes. The first one is to desire willingness as well as the ability. Again, we can see if we are willing to pay, we are able to pay, but we do not have a desire to buy it. Then again, it will not be converted into demand. So, for demand or having a proper demand of something, it is very important to have a desire and a ability as well as a willingness to pay for it. So, the desire without adequate purchasing power and a, a willingness to pay will not affect the market nor do they generate production activity because just on the basis of the desire or a want from a consumer will not create a demand and that demand will not be able to create any kind of production activity. So, these are the things which are important. So, only an effective demand figures are used for the economic analysis. So, economic analysis uh, for, the, for the production purpose and for finding out the economic analysis, the effective demand are only being considered which are covering all the three attributes which we have talked about, the desire to buy it, willingness to pay for it and our ability to pay for it, right. So, these are the three things which are important and then the commodity has further three references that is a price, a period as well as a place. At what price you are demanding, in which, at what period of time you are demanding and at which place you are demanding, right. So, these are the again three further references which are very important for the accomplishment of a demand that is a price, period as well as a place. Example, I have already discussed with every one of you, every one uh, of us desire to possess the premium car, but very few of us have the ability to buy it. So, everybody cannot set to have a demand for a car, right. If they are able and willing to pay for it and if they are having a desire to buy it, then only it would be considered to be a demand. Now, here are some definitions of demand given. Let us look at the definitions given by the different people. The very first definition is given by Bhanam. According to him, the demand for anything 
at a given price is that amount of it which will be bought at a time at a place or at a price right so demand for anything whatever you are demanding you are demanding at a given price right you are demanding it at a point of time during that point of time what is the price of that commodity you are desiring it you are uh, you know you are willing to buy for it as well as you have a ability to pay for it then only it would be considered to be a demand whereas in the words of uh, professor mayers according to him the demand for a good is the schedule of the amount that buyers would be willing to purchase at all possible prices at any one instant of time right where a buyer is ready to buy that commodity at a point of time and he is also willing and able to pay for it then only it will be converted as a demand so if we summarize what demand is demand for the accomplishment of demand or for the effective demand is is important for a buyer to have a need or a desire willingness as well as a ability to pay for it so these are the three different attributes which should be there and the three other references which we have taken for demand are the price period as well as the place at which they are demanded now moving ahead we have different types of demand this is again very important so here we have classified the demand into four categories the first is your direct and derived demand we have recurring and replacement demand complementary and competing demand we have individual and market demand so first we will talk about the direct and derived demand what you have to do is you have to focus on the words which are written here direct demand the things which we are demanding directly right so basically in short you can say consumable goods have a direct demand right the goods which you are demanding directly example can be any like refrigerator you are demanding for a refrigerator you need not have to produce it further that is a direct demand right you demand for a furniture demand for eatable items demand for medicines so consumable goods the goods which are ready to use they have a direct demand okay so when a commodity is demanded for its own sake by the final consumer it is known at consumer good and its demand is the direct demand so in short you can say the demand by a consumer for a consumer goods would be considered as a direct demand and there are two terms which we usually use one is called as consumer and the other is called as customer right uh, I, uh, let me tell you the difference between the consumer as well as the customer consumer is a person who consume the goods and customer is a person who purchase the goods right Cons customer can be consumer also and consumer can be customer also but if we are differentiating between these two terms customer is a person who is buying it right but might be possible that person has bought it but not consumed it the person has purchased that particular thing for somebody else so the ultimate person who is going to consume it would be considered to be a consumer right so demand for consumer goods would have a direct demand whereas demand for capital goods a capital good is demanded for using it either as a raw material or as an intermediary and its demand is the derived demand right like if i am demanding for a construction of a house right so for the construction of a house i need different things like i need bricks material right i i need cement i need iron i need steel so demand for all these things would be the derived demand okay so demand for raw material demand for machineries would be considered to be derived demand because we are not going to use them directly these are the capital goods we are demanding them for some purposes right like the example i have given to you okay if you want to buy if you want to uh, you know get your uh, cloth stitch for getting your cloth stitch you need a piece of a cloth then only you would be able to prepare your dress for it right so the derived demand is the demand for those things you are demanding for the capital goods and with that capital goods you are going to convert them into the consumable goods okay so this is what has been called as direct and derived demand moving ahead we have recurring and replacement demand now what does this word recurring means the demand for those things which recurs again and again or which occurs again and again okay so basically you can say that consumable goods have recurring demand the goods which we consumed okay like e tables like newspaper we are demanding every day like cup of a tea we are demanding maybe twice or thrice a day 
okay, e tables, we have consumed it, now they have finished, we are demanding them again. Okay. So, the goods which are of consumable nature and which are not to be kept for a longer period of time and we are demanding them on regular basis, maybe daily basis or uh, weekly basis or maybe uh, fortnightly basis or maybe monthly basis, but the demand for these goods are of recurring nature, demand for bread, demand for butter. So, these are of recurring nature, they are being demanded again and again, whereas replacement demand is the demand for durable consumer goods which are kept for a longer period of time, right. If you have purchased a television for your house, you are not going to demand the another television the very next day or maybe after a week or maybe after a month, you are going to consume it for a longer period of time and when the technology changes or maybe there is some wear and tear then only you will replace it, right. So, after a considerable period of time, you are going to replace those goods. So, demand for such good is of, uh, you know, replacement demand nature, whereas the demand for those goods which we demand again and again in a shorter period of time, we call it as a recurring demand, right. So, consumer good examples are already written here, e-tables like newspaper, like petrol in a car and durable goods demand like your television, furniture, cars and all. Next is complementary and competing goods demand. Now, what are these complementary goods? Complementary goods are those goods which are which are having the joint demand, right, which we consume together like pen and ink. Pen without an ink is of no use, mobile without a SIM card, printer without a cartridge, car without a petrol, right. So, they are having complementary demand, goods which are demanded together, right. So, the goods which create a joint demand are the complementary goods like car and petrol, mobile and SIM card, whereas goods that compete with each other, those who are substitute of each other like in place of tea you can have a coffee, like drinking a Pepsi or a Coke, okay. So, which you can substitute for one for another. So, those goods are having competing demand, they are competing with each other. Complementary goods which are being used together which creates the joint demand, whereas competing demand for those goods which are substitute for, uh, for each other, which can be used in place of another. So, those uh, demand would be considered to be a complementary and competing demand. Then next we have individual and market demand, demand by an individual consumer, right. Demand for an individual uh, person that would be considered to be an individual demand, right. That person is an individual person and if you are studying only the demand of that specific person would be considered to be an individual demand, whereas demand by all the people in the market would be considered as a market demand, right. So, for an individual person again uh, when we talk about the determinants of demand, we are uh, supposed to take the demand of an individual person, how an individual person is going to uh, you know impact the demand of any commodity. But for the understanding of a, uh, from the producer's point of view, how much product they should produce, they need to understand and they need to analyze the market demand. What is the demand by a market? So, demand by all the consumer for its product known as market demand. Demand for an individual consumer is an individual demand, whereas industry demand is the demand for the product produced by all the firms in the industry, right. If there is a industry and whatever the firms are being producing in that industry. So, that would be constitute as an industry demand and there is a difference between the firm and industry. How do we differentiate between them? Uh, different uh, uh, the firms which are dealing in a same product line comprises a industry, right. We call it as an educational industry, we call it as an hospitality industry, we call it as an banking industry. So, the firms which are producing goods of a same nature right, the product providing services of the same nature constitutes an industry. So, if you are calculating the industry demand, then uh, all the firms working in that particular industry, production made by them would be considered to be an industry demand, right. So, I hope these different types of demands are clear to every one of you, where we have talked about direct and derived demand. Direct demand is the demand for consumer goods, whereas derived demand is the demand for capital goods. Okay. Then we have talked about recurring and replacement demand. Recurring demand is the demand for those goods which we demand again and again, consumable goods, right, which we consume, they finished and we consume them and then we demand them again. Whereas durable consumer goods which we can use for a longer period of uh, time, they have a replacement demand. Then we have complementary and competing goods demand, complementary goods which creates the joint demand which we consume together. 
So, those are considered to be a complementary goods, whereas competing goods are those goods which can be used in place of one another. So, demand for those goods will be of competing nature. And lastly, we have talked about this individual and market demand. Demand by an individual person is an individual demand. Demand by all the consumers in the market would be constituted to as an market demand. And industry demand is the demand for the product produced by all the firms in the industry. Okay. Now, let us uh, move to the next heading where we are going to talk about the determinants of demand. Price of a commodity, the very first determinant which we are going to discuss here is the price of the commodity as because price is the most important factor. Right. Suppose we have a price of commodity X and we have a demand for commodity X. So, we need to understand how the demand for this commodity X is going to be affected wherever there will be a change in the price of commodity X. So, in, uh, in this case what we are saying price is having an inverse relationship with the demand. Right. How do we define it? Price is having an inverse relationship with the demand. Whenever the price of commodity X will increase, the demand for commodity X will decrease and vice versa. So, price of a commodity will impact the demand of a commodity inversely. Whenever the price will increase, demand will decrease and vice versa will take place. So, this is one of the most important factor or determinant you can uh, say that. Next is price of related goods. The another important factor which affects the demand of any commodity is the price of related goods. Let us first talk about the case of substitutes. Substitutes like I said are those goods which can be used in place of one another. We have two goods product A as well as product B. Right. So, what we are comparing here substitutes like I said tea or coffee are the substitute for each other. So, if the price of tea increases right what will happen demand for coffee will increase if the price of tea is increasing demand for coffee will increase because now people rather than having tea because the price of tea has already increased so what people will do people will go and shift their demands towards coffee because definitely automatically since there is no change in the price of uh, you know coffee takes uh, took place but because the price of tea increases people shifted their demand towards coffee. So, you can see in this case the substitute goods were having positive relationship. Whenever in case of substitute goods uh, this effects we are studying we say that there is a positive relationship between the price of uh, substitute goods as well as demand for the substitute. Right. So, whenever the price of tea will increase demand for coffee will increase. Whereas, in case of complementary goods there is an inverse relationship. Because complementary goods are those goods which creates the joint demand, right, which we consume together, car and petrol, right. So, whenever we say whenever the price of petrol increases, demand for automobile sector industry decreases. Why? Because they are complementary goods, they are being demanded together. So, if the price of one commodity will increase, definitely the demand for another commodity will decrease. So, there is always an inverse relationship in case of complementary goods. So, for your better understanding price of a commodity is having an inverse relationship like I told in case of substitute goods there is a positive relationship and whereas in case of uh, complementary goods again there is an inverse relationship. Inverse relationship right. Now, talking about the income of a consumer yes income of a consumer also has a considerable impact on demand of any commodity. And in general terms, we usually say that whenever the income of a consumer increases, demand for commodity also increases, right. So, this is the general statement which we say that income creates a positive impact on the demand. But again, we have different type of commodity to make it more clear and to understand it clearly. We have divided the commodities into three categories. First, we have necessary goods. We have comforts and luxurious goods and we have inferior goods as well. So, let us look at the uh, you know relationship of uh, demand uh, or, or the change in the price of the in, uh, change in the income of a consumer how it is going to impact the demand for necessary goods. So, whenever the income of a consumer increases demand for necessary good will also increase, but that increase in demand will take place up to a point of time up to a period of time. Suppose uh, when my income was less, I was only consuming 
may be uh, fruits I was consuming for 1000 rupees only, right, because my income uh, is limited and the consumption of fruits which I was making for a month around maybe 1000 rupees, but now my income has increased and I have also increased my consumption of fruits, right, but that consumption will increase up to a point of time. It is not possible for me to consume 5 kgs or 10 kgs or 15 kgs or maybe 20 kgs every month, right. I will increase my consumption of fruits definitely, but up to a certain point because this is a necessary item, maybe uh, I, I want to consume it because it is good for my health. So, I am going to consume its consumption up to a point of time and after that it will not increase. So, you can see that in case of necessary goods, whenever the income of a consumer increases, their demand increases up to a certain point and thereafter it will uh, not increase. Then in, uh, if we talk about comforts and luxurious goods, for the comfort and luxurious goods as we know the luxurious goods are those goods, the demand for such goods keeps on increasing as and when our income increases. So, for these goods there will always be a positive relationship because whenever the consumer income increases, the demand for these luxu uh, luxurious goods keeps on increasing, right. People demand to have more and more of luxurious goods. Whereas, in case of inferior goods, now what are inferior goods? Inferior goods are basically those goods which are having lower quality, right. There is no such uh, defined inferior goods we have, but yes definitely uh, in case of a comparison we can make inferior goods are those goods which are having a low quality goods, right. So, when the income of a people increases or whenever the income of a consumer increases, demand for inferior goods will decrease. So, in this case, uh, demand uh, and income is having an inverse relationship, right. So, I hope it is clear to every one of you for necessary goods, demand will increase, but up to a point, it after that it will become stable. Whereas, in case of comforts and luxuries, whenever the income of a consumer increases, demand for such goods keeps on increasing, right. And that is why they creates a positive impact. Whereas, in case of inferior goods, because they are the lower quality goods, so whenever the income of a consumer increases, demand for these goods will decrease. Moving further, we have taste and preferences of the consumer also. Taste and preferences of a consumer also have a significant impact on the demand of any commodity and since taste and preference of a consumer keeps on changing, they are not, uh, they, they, uh, they, their taste and preferences are not, never same for the longer period of time, right. So, if the taste and preference of a consumer is in the favor of that commodity, then definitely the demand for that commodity will increase. If the taste and preference of the consumer is not in the favor of that commodity, then the demand for that commodity will decrease. So, that depends upon the taste and preference of the consumer, right. What is the trend taking place? If people are demanding liking those things, then demand will be more and people are not liking those things, then demand will be less. Then we have the other factors also which have a significant impact on the demand of any commodity like size and composition of population, right. So, population also uh, plays a very important role here, more population, more demand, lesser population, lesser demand, right. And then that population uh, do have their uh, demographics as well, if the product is uh, for the younger people or for the adults and then uh, the product targets more of women or uh, more of uh, men that depends upon the composition of that population. If we are having more composition of that population, then demand will be more and if we are having less composition of that population, then demand will be less. The next is the income level of uh, the people and its distribution. Yes, income level, higher income level of the people will demand more and lesser income level, will there will be a lesser demand in the economy. Then we have sociological factors as well. Right, sociological factors will also have a great impact on the demand of that commodity like their education level, like their marital status, like their age, right, like their uh, you know uh, family background, the culture to which they belong to. So, all these sociological factors also have a considerable impact on the demand of any commodity. Then we have weather conditions, weather conditions also affect the demand. In summers, we have demand for ice creams, we have demand more of, uh, you know, air conditioners, whereas in winters, we have demand for, uh, you know, heaters. So, these are the things which changes or the demand for such product changes because of change in the weather conditions. Then we have advertisement. 
effective advertisements also have a considerable impact on demand and that is why companies are spending lot of money on the advertisement right that will help them to create lot of demand in the market so an effective advertisement is there people are liking it demand will be more and the vice versa moving ahead we have government policies also as we know government plays a very important role right and they they are framing different kind of policies and uh, most important things which are uh, associated with the government policy is the consideration of taxes right so if uh, certain commodities where the taxes are less then the demand of those commodities are higher because they need to uh, the prices of those commodities will be lesser but in case if the taxes you need to pay more then the demand for those commodities will be lesser so government policies also have a considerable impact on the demand of any commodity depending upon the taxes they are charging associated with those commodities then we have the expectations about future price and income what is the expectation of people right related to the price of that commodity as well as their expectation with their income suppose if i am expecting that the price of certain commodity is going to increase in future so what will i do i will try to buy more of that commodity today because i know that the price of this commodity is going to increase in future so the demand present demand of that commodity will increase or if i am expecting that the demand of certain commodity is going to decrease in future so definitely i will shift my demand from today uh, to future right uh, rather than buying it today i would like to buy that commodity in future because i am expecting that the price of this commodity is going to decrease in future same is the expectation with the income of a consumer suppose if i am expecting uh, uh, you know promotion in my job right so definitely i would be getting promotion in my salary also so if i am expecting my income to be increased in the future then what will i do i'll start buying more of things from today itself so my demand from today will increase because i am expecting there is an increase in going to me in my income right or somehow if you are expecting that you have certain responsibilities you need to meet out in the future right you you want to save some money maybe you have your uh, you know family marriage in your in your family or there is some health problem in your family so you try to start save from today itself because you know that future uh, where you cannot spend more of your income on the demand of certain goods but rather you need to save more so that depends upon the expectations of people with the price of the commodity associated with their income as well then we have certain trade conditions also as we know in our economy we have different kind of uh, business cycle taking place we are into uh, expansion phases also we have to face this contraction phase as well right so as we see that during the expansion phase because economy is growing right demand for goods increases because people are earning good uh, people are employed and when they are employed they are earning well and when they are earning well they demand more of the commodities so trade conditions also have a significant impact on the demand of the commodity and whenever there is a recession in the economy because of the recession people don't have jobs people don't have income so their demand definitely goes down during recession so trade conditions also impact the demand depending upon the situation in the economy and lastly we have consumer credit facility and interest rate these days as we all know we have credit facilities we are having credit cards available to us so people who utilize these facilities they definitely demand more and in today's time that has helped us to increase our purchasing power as well because of this credit card facility so if we are having these facilities with us definitely the demand for goods increases and if the interest rates are low people are able to get more loans and then they demand more of the commodity so these are also very important factors which are impacting the demand of any commodity in today's time so these are not the only factors which we have discussed in in our lecture today regarding the determinants of demand you can talk about a uh, few different factors also uh, which has a considerable impact on the demand but definitely these are the factors which are taken into account whenever we are considering the effect of uh you know determinants on the demand of any commodity right so these are the determinants we have talked about now let us move to the next heading where we are going to talk about demand function now demand function is basically when we try to express the mathematical relationship between the demand and its determinants we call it as a demand function so it is expressing the relationship between demand and its determinants mathematically and that relationship is called as demand function 
and how do we write it? Demand for commodity x. So, we are reminding, writing it like this demand for commodity x is the function of price of commodity x, y is the income of the consumer, p o is the price of related goods, your substitutes and complementary goods, then t refers to the taste and preferences, a advertisement, expectations of consumer for the future price as well as income of the commodity and represents here the population and the growth of the economy. So, you can incorporate all the determinants of demand which we have studied in our previous topic. Whenever you are establishing their relationship with the demand, we call it as a demand function. So, it is a mathematical relationship where we are writing that demand of any commodity is function of all these factors. I hope it is clear to every one of you, it is just a mathematical relationship, how do we explain it? Suppose if you are talking about uh, price and demand only, so and then how we are going to write it? The demand for commodity F is the function of price of commodity X, this is how we define demand function for law of demand, because in law of demand, we only establish the relationship between the price and demand, what will be the change taking place? in the demand of a commodity whenever there will be a change in the price. So, here in this case, in case of law of demand, demand for commodity X will only be the function of price of commodity X. But in general, when we are talking about the demand function, here we are expressing all the determinants of demand which can affect the demand of any commodity, right. Moving ahead, we have demand schedule. Now, what is this demand schedule? To understand it better, it is basically a tabular representation where we are trying to understand how the demand of any commodity will get affected because of change in the price. So, here we have uh, divided the demand schedule into two categories where we are going to talk about individual demand schedule and next we are going to talk about the market demand schedule. So, let us first start with the individual demand schedule. What is this individual demand schedule? Individual demand curve is the table showing different quantities of a commodity that one particular consumer is willing to buy at different levels of price during a given period of time. So, here we have this table. On the left side, we are showing the price of sugar per kg and it is the demand of the consumer, quantity demanded per month by a consumer, an individual consumer. You can see when the price of sugar per kg was 1, then the demand was 5 kg and as in when the demand price of sugar is increasing, demand is reducing, right. So, here you can see that whenever there is an increase in the price, the quantity demanded for that commodity keeps on decreasing. So, it donates that there is an inverse relationship between the price and quantity demanded, right. This we have already studied that whenever we are considering the price and demand together, there will always be an inverse relationship shown uh, for price as well as quantity demanded and there are two things which we are calling one is quantity demanded and one is quantity demanded. So, how do we differentiate between quantity demanded and quantity demanded? Whenever we are referring it to the price, right, when we are establishing a relationship between the demand and the price, we usually call it quantity demanded. Right. Whereas, when we are studying the impact of other factors, uh, you know, other than price like income of the consumer, taste and preference of the consumer, price of related goods. So, that time we usually call quantity demanded, right. In reference to the price, we call it quantity demanded, uh, you know, whereas, when we are referring it uh, with the factors other than price, then we call it as an quantity demanded, right. So, this is how we understand the individual demand curve, demand by an individual curve, uh, demand by an individual customer and how the demand of an individual consumer will get affected because of change in the price. Now, next is your market demand schedule. Now, market demand schedule, here one assumption we have taken that is we are only having two buyers in the market and to understand this market demand, we have taken only two consumer. So, again this uh, table is helping you to understand the market demand where we have summarizes the demand by both the consumer that is in market A and market B. So, first column shows the price of the uh, sugar per kg, then the next column shows the quantity demanded per month by the consumer one and then the next column shows the quantity demanded by the consumer uh, second and in the market demand we are uh, you know combining the demand by 
consumer 1 and consumer 2. So, here also you can see as in when the price of sugar is increasing, the demand for the commodity is decreasing. So, this market demand schedule will also help you to understand how demand will get affected because of change in the price of a commodity and these demand schedules are basically the tabular representation of uh, the establishment between the price as well as demand. Right. To understand the law of demand better, we, we represent it by the way of this scheduling. Now, we have demand curve, further moving from demand schedule to demand curve, here we have a graphical representation. Okay. Whatever we have studied in a tabular form in the demand schedule, here this is what we are going to understand in a graphical form, we represent the demand curve, demand curve is a graphical representation of demand schedule or demand function. A demand curve for any commodity can be drawn by plotting each combination of price and demand on the graph, right. The quantity which we have seen in the previous slide, if I go back, I show you this chart and if we are going to plot these figures, like on the x axis, we always keep quantity demanded and on the y axis, we keep the prices. So, we are going to plot these uh, points which we have seen here, prices we will keep on the y axis and this is the market demand which we are going to represent on the x axis. So, this is how we can represent our demand curve, right. So, demand curve is being shown like this, like I said, price is also, also to be kept, always to be kept on the y axis because uh, price is an independent variable. It is the effect of price which we are studying on demand. So, being a dependent variable, we always show quantity demanded on the x axis, right. So, this is again the demand for the consumer 1 and this is the demand for the consumer 2 and then when we combine them together, we have this market demand where we are showing the demand of the total market altogetherly. And this always be an inverse relationship because we know whenever there is a change in the price taking place, uh, you know or whenever there is an increase in the price taking place, the quantity demanded for that commodity will decrease. There will always be an inverse relationship. So, that will always be uh, you know showing this downward sloping curve and one thing which I would like to add here is demand curve can be linear also, demand curve can be uh, non-linear also. That depends upon the change taking place in the quantity demanded. You will get to know that uh, you know change in linear and non-linear curve when we will talk about the topic elasticity of demand and there I will help you to understand that there are different type of commodities which have a different effect uh, because of change in the price, right. Some commodities have uh, you know same change in the demand because of change in the price, but there are certain commodities which change a little lesser than uh, because their elasticity to price is less. Some products are more elastic to price, some products are less elastic to price, some products are equally uh, proportionately elastic to price. So, that uh, because of that the demand curve has different shapes, it can be linear or it can be non-linear, but definitely they will always be downward sloping because there is an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. Moving ahead, we have movements along the demand curve. Now, what are these movements? How we are going to understand the movements along the demand curve? Here we have two things which we need to understand. The first is called as expansion or extension and the second one is called as contraction. Now, movement we are uh, discussing here, uh, it, this movement uh, basically we relate with the price only. Okay. Whenever there is a change in the quantity demanded because of change in the price, then movements on the demand curve will take place. So, what we are saying when the price of a commodity falls, whenever a price of a commodity falls, its quantity demanded rises. Okay. We can see here whenever the price, when the price was P1, the quantity demanded was Q1 and when the price was P, uh, I am sorry, when the price was P, the quantity demanded was Q and when price reaches to P2, the quantity demanded was Q2. So, P and Q is the, uh, you know, starting point which we have started when price reduced. When the price reduced, you can see the increase in the quantity demanded, the demanded increases from Q to Q1, right. And this demand curve will shift downward. The extension of demand taking place which says that whenever there is a decrease in the price, the quantity demanded will increase which represents the expansion or extension in the demand curve. Whereas, if you talk about contraction of demand, 
when price increases from P to P2. So, our demand decreases from Q to Q2. So, our demand decreases. So, that causes the contraction of demand and that is happening because of change in price only. So, movements on demand curve will take place only because of change in the price. Whenever the price will increase, the demand will decrease that causes the contraction in the demand curve. Whereas, whenever the price will decrease, the demand will increase and it will cause an expansion to the demand curve, right. So, this is how you need to understand the movement along our demand curve and that take place because of change in the price. Now, if you talk about shifts in demand curve, what is meant by shifts in demand curve? Demand curve will shift either upward or downward and these shifts in demand curve taking place because of change in any factor other than price, right. Other than price, if there is a change taking place, maybe because of income of the consumer, price of related goods, advertisement, size of population, weather condition, whatever the uh, factor it is, but other than price, if they are causing a change in the quantity demand, that is uh, called as shift in demand curve. So, here we have increase in demand as well as decrease in demand, you can see here price remaining the same, since I said price is not changing, price remaining the same. When the demand rises due to change in the factors other than price like consumers income, like taste and preferences, like change in population, like price of related goods. So, that increase will take place and whenever there will be an increasing taking place in the demand, the demand curve will shift rightwards, right or you can say upward, ok. So, this demand which is moving from D to D, right, this is called as increase in demand curve price remaining the same, you can see there is no change in the price, price keeping constant. This is the change taking place in the quant, uh, quantity demand because of change in the other factor. So, this quantity has been increased from Q to Q1, maybe because the income of the consumer has been increased and because of that they have started demanding more of that commodity on the same price. So, our demand curve will shift from uh, you know this point to this point which causes an increase in the demand right, which we are saying that it will shift towards the right. Whereas, decrease in the demand we are saying price remaining the same, right, price again the price is constant. When the demand falls due to the change in the factors other than price, now see earlier the demand was Q1 and now this demand has been shifted inside, ok, demand has been shifted inside and this causes the decrease in demand. Earlier we were demanding this much of commodity, now because of the change in the taste and preference may be the consumer demanding lesser of that commodity, keeping the price same, there is no change in the price, price is neither increasing nor decreasing, it remains same, it is constant. Even then if the demand is decreasing, we call it as a decrease in demand. So, there are two things which you need to remember, here is one is movement along the demand curve movement along the demand curve takes place because of change in the price. If the price is in increasing and because of increase in the price, quantity demanded decreases, then we call it as a contraction in demand curve. Whereas, when the quantity demanded increases because of decrease in the price, we call it as an expansion. Here in this demand curve itself, if we are moving downwards, we are calling it as an extension of demand. If we are moving upward, we call it as an contraction of demand, whereas shifts in demand curve takes place because of change in the factors other than price, right, because of uh, the change in the income, because of change in the population, change in the advertisement, change in taste and preference of the consumer, any factor if it is causing change to change the quantity demand, then we call it as in shifts in demand curve. When demand will increase, it will shift towards right, whereas when demand will decrease, it will shift towards left, right. So, these are the topics which we have covered today. Let us look at the review of our subject today, whatever the topics we have covered. Initially, we have talked about demand, what demand is. Demand is basically a need or a desire, a need or a desire of something which is backed by an ability and willingness to pay for it, right. Many people have a desire and need of many things, but that cannot be constituted to be a demand, right. 
to be an effective demand it is very important that a person is also having an ability to pay for it as well as willingness to pay for it right then only it will be uh, constituted to be an effective demand and with this effective demand only the further decisions can be taken that what to produce and how much to produce okay so this is how we analyze the demand in the market by looking at the willingness as well as ability and desire of a person to buy certain thing at a given point of time at a price as well as at a given place so again three attributes which are being added to the demand is the price a period as well as a place associated with that demand then we have talked about different types of demand in different types of demand we have discussed about direct and derived demand direct demand is the demand for those commodities which are of consumable nature right consumer goods are having a direct demand which you are demanding directly and which you are consuming directly which does not need further processing whereas derived demand is the demand which derived out of something okay uh, which you are not directly demanding demand for capital goods right you are demanding you you want to uh, you know construct a house for yourself but for the construction of a house you need bricks you need cement you need uh, you know iron you need wood so all these things which comes out of the demand of that construction of a house would be constitute as an derived demand right then we have talked about recurring and replacement demand demand which are of recurring nature uh, commodities which we are demanding again and again consumable items which we consume and then we demand them again those demands are of recurring nature whereas replacement demand is the demand for those goods which are kept for a longer period of time which are called as durable consumer goods like if we have purchased furniture then we are not demanding it again and again we are going to use it for a considerable period of time and after a period of time we can replace it maybe because of wear and tear or maybe because of change in uh, design or anything which you are not liking after a period of time after usage of it okay so replacement demand is for the durable consumer goods and recurring demand is for the consumer uh, consumable goods which you consume and then you start demanding them again when uh, thereafter we have competing and complementary goods demand competing goods are those goods which can be used in place of one another so demand for those goods are of competing nature they are also called as substitute goods whereas complementary goods are those goods which creates the joint demand which are been demanded together so demand for those goods would be of complementary nature and thereafter we have talked about individual and market demand demand by an individual consumer would be constitute as an individual demand demand by all the consumers in the market would constitute as an market demand and for the study of uh, you know what to produce and how much to produce would be answered by this market demand whereas the determinants of demand are been studied on the basis of individual demand how individual will uh, demand anything and what are the factors which will affect the demand of any any commodity will be studied on the basis of individual demand thereafter we have talked about the determinants of demand there are different factors which affects the demand of the commodity and the most important factor is the price of any commodity right price of any commodity has a considerable impact on the demand of that commodity and there is always an inverse relationship because we say that whenever the price increases uh, the demand for that commodity automatically decreases right and then we have price of related goods also where we have seen the impact of substitution goods and complementary goods in case of substitute goods there will be a positive relationship because a price of uh, you know substitute commodity increases then demand for that another commodity will also increase right whereas in case of complementary goods there will be an inverse relationship because these are the goods which are jointly demanded so if price of one commodity will increase demand for another commodity will decrease thereafter we have talked about the income of the consumer generally we say whenever there is an increase in the income of a consumer demand will increase but that depends upon the nature of the commodity again for the necessary goods whenever the income of a consumer increases it increases up to a point thereafter it will not increase whereas in case of luxurious goods there is always a positive relationship whenever there will be an increase in the income people will demand more of luxurious goods whereas inferior goods whenever the income of the consumer increases demand for inferior goods will decrease so here they have the negative relationship then we have other factors like taste and preferences of the consumer weather conditions right 
if there is a hot weather the demand for those goods will increase which are demanded in summer when there is a cold weather the demand for those goods will increase uh, which are demanded in you know uh, winter seasons right we have uh, size of population also more people more demand lesser people lesser demand credit card facilities rate of interest uh, bank rate of interest nowadays people demand more of their goods because they are having credit facilities available to them so demand will definitely increase then we have other factors like uh, future expectation of price as well as income of the uh, people uh, how they are expecting the increase in the price of that commodity in future and how much increase they are expected in their income so these are the different determinants advertisement effect can be there right sociological factors are there which impact the demand of any commodity so there are different factors which affect the demand of the commodity and if they are into the favor of those things like government policies right if the government policies are in favor of those commodities then there will be higher demand if there is a lesser uh, you know if the policy is not in the favor then definitely there will be a lesser demand so different factors have a different impact on the demand which we need to study then we have talked about demand function demand function like i said establish a mathematical relationship between the demand and its determinants right how we express that demand of commodity x is the function of price of commodity x income of the consumers government policies taste and preference of the consumer size of population in the economy future expectations of the income as well as price of the commodity so this mathematical relationship the way we are expressing the relationship between the demand and its determinants would constitute as a demand function then we have talked about demand schedule demand schedule is a tabular representation of demand uh, demand uh, price as well as demand dem quantity demanded right law of demand you can say because in law of demand we establish a relationship between price and demand and as we know as and when price increases the demand will decrease so here in demand schedule i have discussed with you individual uh, demand schedule as well as market demand schedule where we have seen how the demand of an individual will get affected because of change in the price whereas in case of market demand schedule we have seen how the demand of different consumer will affect the market demand right and there we have also made the assumption that there are only two uh, customers in the market because of which we have summarized this market demand then we have talked about the demand curve demand curve is a graphical representation of demand schedule right here we uh, see how demand can be represented in on graph so for demand curve we always have two axes on the y axis we show the price because price being an independent variable we keep it on the y axis and on the x axis we represent the quantity demanded right so whenever there is a change in the price there will be a change in the quantity demanded and as there is an inverse relationship our demand curve will always be downward sloping but demand curve can be linear also or demand curve can be non linear that depends upon how much change has been taken place in the quantity demanded due to the change in the price and then thereafter we have talked about movements on demand curve movements on demand curve take place because of change in the price right so whenever we are shifting towards right when the quantity demanded increases we call it to as an extension in demand because there is an increase in the demand taking place because of change in the price whereas whenever moving upward or towards the left on the demand curve it would be called as contraction in demand curve because there is a change in the demand taking place whenever the price increases demand will decrease and that will cause an uh, contraction in demand curve and lastly we have talked about shifts in demand curve shifts in demand curves will take place because of change in any factor other than price right our demand curve if we are uh, representing this way our demand curve then if our demand curve is shifting towards right right that means there is a change taking place in any of the factor like income like consumer taste and preferences like advertisement and that causes an increase in the demand that has been called as shift in demand and the shift will be called as increase in the demand right because the demand is increasing whereas if the demand curve is shifting uh, shifting towards uh, backward right towards the left that means there is a decrease in the demand taking place because again there is a change in factors other than price so these are the things which you need to understand regarding the demand i hope all of you have understood it well 
Let me show you the reference books uh, from which I have taken the references. Thank you all of you.